focus. Focus is the meta skill of life, the habit of habits, the skill of skills. In the words of Dan Coe in his book, The Art of Focus, the ability to focus your attention on a meaningful goal, holding that in the back of your mind as a distraction repellent, knowing exactly how to achieve it through prior experience and refocusing on the choice in front of you is a superpower. We are at a pivotal moment in human evolution. Attention spans are shrinking. Bodies are getting softer. Minds are growing weaker. Technological advances have made our lives vastly more comfortable, but simultaneously less meaningful. Our ability to focus is worse than ever. In a desperate attempt to feel something, we turn towards consciousness diminishing activities like drugs or games. Because games provide the hierarchy of goals, the clarity of progression, and the meshing of being with doing that every human craves in their soul. The problem is, if we only play games, we don't advance our real life character. This was my issue in high school. I played games like Civilization VI, The Witcher 3, and Darkest Dungeon. Focused on leveling up in the game, I became pretty good at constructing nuclear weapons as Gandhi in Civilization VI. But I stagnated in real life. Through learning the art of focus, I'm leveraging the mental energy I used in games to start finding meaning, reinventing myself, and realizing my ideal future in real life. In this video, I'm gonna give a book summary interpretation of The Art of Focus so that you can do the same. I have read hundreds of books over the last few years, and this is a big statement, but this is the best book I have ever read. Dan Coe combines spirituality, neuroscience, cognitive science, psychology, gamification, and more into what feels like a cohesive narrative of the human experience. I have no doubt that this book can be as life-changing for you as it has been for me, because I intend to read it every single year from now on, because you will get different things every time. So let's get into it. What's the one skill that gamers need to find meaning, reinvent themselves, and realize their ideal future? We hinted at it earlier. Focus. Focus is the ultimate meta skill of life. Focus separates action from distraction, meaning from meanlessness, working towards your goals from not getting sidetracked by Krispy Kreme donuts at work. The problem is people have a narrow view of what focus is. Most people think of it as funneling your consciousness on a very direct activity. Focus, in reality, is attention with intention. It's about having awareness in all of your life. By this definition, you can be focused, and I encourage you to be, while walking around in nature doing nothing in particular. There are four states of focus we can have inside of our life. Unconscious narrow focus, unconscious open focus, conscious narrow focus, and conscious open focus. Unconscious narrow focus is when you funnel your consciousness on a specific thing without awareness. This often leads to feelings like stress, anxiety, and annoyance. For example, a few days ago, a rogue thought Thought about whether a long-term distance relationship with someone I'm growing to like wouldn't work came into my mind and kept me up for two hours at night. I was not aware while I was going through this thought spiral. Unconscious open focus is when you bounce between past, present, and future, like some caffeine hyped yo-yo, without understanding how you could solve that problem. This can make you feel lost, overwhelmed, and anxious. For example, thinking about student loans and upcoming tests and a friendship fallout all at the same time. Conscious narrow focus occurs when you funnel your attention on a specific thing with awareness. It often leads to the flow state and afterwards feeling of satisfaction and contentment. For example, the feeling we get in games that we've started to get a hold of. The challenge meets the level of skill that we have or is just a bit above it and therefore is beautiful for our consciousness. Conscious open focus is when you broaden your mind with awareness to nothing in particular. It often leads to creativity, relaxation, and a sense of peace. For example, when I walked through the Adirondack Mountains with my dad during winter break and felt my soul literally connect with the universe itself. It was a surreal 
feeling. Here's the thing, through cultivating your focus, you can move more, if not all, of your time to conscious, open, and narrow focus. Let's learn what frame of mind this allows you to tap into. The greatest frame of consciousness that humans can be in is aspirance. Aspirance is a term I made up by mixing aspiration and experience together. It describes the beautiful state of consciousness in which being collapses into doing. When you create a self-made hierarchy of goals, gain clarity on the action and skills needed to achieve those goals, and take action all while from the perspective of your highest self. Pure joy. There is no greater frame or state, except maybe eating peanut butter for me, probably not for you, that you can have. Aspiration is the combination of the greatest states or frames of consciousness that you can be in. Self-actualization, transcendence, the flow state, ikigai, mindfulness, autotelic personality, and eudaimonia. When in aspirants, you align your consciousness and subconscious together to pursue goals. You create a funnel for the natural chaos of the mind. You experience the joy of being and doing together. You cultivate a meta flow state. Every gamer has had a taste of aspirins. Sounds like I'm talking about a truck now. <laughs> ignore, ignore that sentence. I felt it while playing The Witcher 3. I identified as Geralt, a version of my higher self, and pursued a hierarchy of goals. I took the best qualities in Geralt and tried to ingrain them into my real life, like honesty, discipline, patience, honor, and an ability to do the hard things that other people don't want to do. The question is, why don't we exist in this frame of mind all the time? The reason is we don't have the level of consciousness built through focus to consistently have such a frame. Most of us are too attached to the self to reach that level of consciousness. So. Let's learn how we can navigate this by exploring what the self is and how it's keeping us from aspirants. Still sounds like I'm talking about a drug. <laughs> As kids, we're born into the world with no sense of self. We have no expectations for the world. In a way, we see things as they truly are with an empty mind. But as we experience the world, we start to form expectations. Our mom breastfeeding us, our parents playing peekaboo, our hands interacting with blocks. Slowly, our window to the world gets clouded, foggy, stained, and we literally perceive the world differently from others looking through their own window. We create expectations in the form of labels for hand, mom, dad, and more. And the more we age, the more our expectations grow and our sense of self with it. By young adulthood, many people have developed rigid foundation for their sense of self that they will have for the rest of their life. An analogy we can use to understand this building of self is that of strings. We form an invisible web of expectations that build a web of strings. These strings are not only formed by material perception, but also immaterial. Beliefs, biases, ideologies, ideas, and language that allow you to make sense of the world around you. Some strings are flimsy. They are only a few centimeters thick, like yarn, and therefore can be cut easily. Some strings, however, are like steel. They're inches thick and much harder to cut because we're so attached. They're also conductive. Reality questioning this expectation can cause an electric shock that can physically hurt because the body cannot differentiate between emotional and physical pain, target the same parts of the brain. We've all experienced the pain of having a core part of our self question. A few days ago, I was eating dinner at Morrison Dining Hall with my dad when he said that I came across as very arrogant in the gym earlier that day. I felt a sense of physical pain because my ideal self is wise and humble. Therefore, having the perception from others that I'm come across as arrogant in the gym clashed with that expectation and sent a shock down that string of myself. 
Importantly, the source of pain from the self often comes from a more foundational string than the one question. In the previous example, the question belief was my expectation of how I come across in the gym. But the thing that actually caused so much pain was me wanting to come across as wise as Gandalf with a staff and big long beard and not because I was coming across as arrogant, according to my dad. I had a much stronger attachment to that expectation, a much thicker steel string, which is what actually caused the pain. We can understand this by digging deeper whenever we feel our sense of self threatened. What string is truly being questioned? Simply identifying the root of a struggle can help us get rid of the uncertainty around it and therefore relieve a lot of the pain. Rigid identification with the self is the root of evil. Closed-mindedness is the cause of most relationship struggles, wars, and suffering in the world. The only solution is to become radically open-minded, to study other perspectives and ingrain them into your consciousness. Leonardo da Vinci is a perfect example of this. In many ways, Leonardo was like a kid. As kids, everything is new and therefore everything sparks curiosity. By remaining radically open-minded as he aged, Leonardo kept that curiosity and constantly reformed his web of expectations. He created innovations in anatomy, fluid dynamics, and painting that wouldn't get reinvented for centuries. We can influence our web of expectations as well. We can cut old strings or build new ones. We must critically assess the information that we consume and create new insights. This is why I'm such a big advocate of linked reading, which I teach in my course, The Art of Linked Reading, you can check out up above. To solve the world's problems and enter aspiration, we must solve our problems of self first. Otherwise, we'll be too close-minded, surviving the idea of us to make true change. When we step back and observe the masses, we can see this carry out in a negative manner. From religion, to business, to sports, to jobs, we become a part of a whole of someone else's creation. Unconsciously identify with it, and then act to survive the identity. If you don't take responsibility for your own game, you will spend your whole life playing someone else's. Life is the ultimate metagame. Inside life, there are an infinite number of games. Some games like parenting are longer, and some games like the dating game are much shorter. Each game is defined by its goals, rules, feedback, and gameplay loop. Taken together, this makes the game's gameplay. While the same gameplay can change subtly across different families, societies, cultures, the core structure of it generally stays the same. Just like ideas, beliefs, and religions spread through people, so do games. The game of school is a great example. Without active participation from new students, parents, administrators, and professors, the game would stop. This keeps an archaic system running despite the fact that many people nowadays can learn faster and with higher quality online while not sacrificing their kidneys to afford student loans. Games like these still exist because people play the games of others rather than play their own. In the modern era, we survive our psychic body, ourselves, by spreading them to others. People don't acquire beliefs, beliefs acquire people. Ideas that don't spread well never enter the cultural zeitgeist and therefore don't affect the majority of humanity. Ideas that do spread well, like that of school, Christianity, and Republican, can make their way into the unconscious goals of people, potentially robbing them of their autonomy. In the same way we defend our physical bodies, we defend our mental bodies when they're threatened. Cushion a Republican's belief or anyone stuck to a rigid identity, and they will defend it as if their physical body were under attack. It's survival. This is how you find yourself defending someone else's game. The antidote is focus. With focus, you can navigate the ideas of others with consciousness. It's one thing to go to school with a self-created hierarchy of goals, intentionality. It's another to go unconsciously because everyone else is. That's how you find yourself going through the motions for your whole life. Here's the good news. You can create your own game instead of playing someone else's. Tattoo this question to your forehead. Or maybe don't do that because it's expensive to get rid of tattoos. How can I make this 
into a game. This is how one finds meaning, reinvents themselves, and realizes their ideal self. They create their own game out of life by defining a self-made hierarchy of goals, gaining clarity over the steps and skills needed to achieve those, and taking action, all while aspiring to become their highest self. Nothing makes me feel more alive than creating my ideal future, actively working towards solving my problems in my way, whether in health, work, and relationships, and teaching others how to do the same thing through teaching. Being meshes into doing. Consciousness and subconsciousness work in tandem. I reach aspirants, all through cultivating the art of focus. If you want to start your path to focus, get my gamification resource list in the description below or up above and turn your real life into the most fun game imaginable. Create your superhero alter ego, define your quests and epic wins, cultivate your skills and abilities and fight your bad guys. As always, have a fantastic rest of your day and bye-bye.